Ezra, welcome back again. Today is a work day. Today is all about tools and it's all about mapping locations. I'm going to be covering a lot of different software packages today, all of which will be free. Uh, I will not be covering anything that uh, you might have to pay for or says that it is free, but essentially you need to pay for it to be able to make it function for you. So everything that I'll be presenting today uh, I will do after my main presentation, I will cover and show you a whole lot of different things that you can use that don't cost you a thing, that are thick, quick, fast, easy to use, don't require a lot of effort on your part, but just get the job done. Okay? And they look pretty good, and they still give you some control. I'm going to put up a poll, feel free to pay, take part in that poll, and uh, feel free to ask questions. Our Fred Huber, I can see in the chat, has already, already suggested just dumping dice on a piece of paper to create the continents and then drawing around those dice to uh, create your, your various shapes, which is, of course, certainly a way you can do that. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is I'll do my presentation, which is a slideshow, and then we'll go straight into the, the different software that I think you might want to consider using just to make your life a little bit easier. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Make sure you have some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable, and uh, let's go on a ride. Anyway. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about role-playing games. Any role-playing game. This is Game Master Preparation. This is a, a lesson for, for creating locations. When we talk about locations, what we really talk about is maps, the information about maps, uh, all those different things, the ideas behind all of that. So what I'm going to be covering today is I'm going to be covering uh, inspiration for creating your locations, how to create your locations in the first place, location details and information, the specific location layouts. Now, I have covered specific location layouts in the past, such as castles and tombs and pyramids, and there, of course, will be other things I will discuss in the future. But uh, today, what I want to do is concentrate on using mapping software for our locations to make it easy for you and certainly a lot around the world building aspect then miscellaneous recommendations because I always want to have some miscellaneous recommendations for you just in case you feel you need them my objectives to explain how to build your adventure locations for your role-playing game demonstrate that process now <clears throat> I'm not so much going to demonstrate I'm going to show you very briefly how to use some various pieces of software. That's basically it, okay? And allow you to practice, so I'm gonna get you to practice. Hopefully you'll pick the one that works for you and uh, yeah, leave the ones that don't work for you. Anyway, inspiration for creating locations. I have always found that real world architecture and landmarks are some of the best places for creating inspiration for the locations for your adventure and the stories that you create. Find an image, of a historical building, a structure, an area, build on that, adjust it, modify it in some way. Also, books, movies offer landscape pictures and places that are quite exotic. They can also be very useful. Video games that have an RPG play experience often present very dynamic environments that you can explore, which means you can use those maps and those locations to build out stuff for your adventures. Pictures, paintings, landscapes done in oil and acrylic or even watercolour could certainly present you with some interesting locations that you could map out. And I've done this before. You can use pre-made role-playing game published adventures that have map locations, okay? And just port them over. Still adjust them, just use them as they are. It doesn't really matter. It's completely up to you. Google search Pinterest, ArtStation, DeviantArt, they also have, also have lots of different images of locations and quite often already constructed maps so you don't even have to make the map yourself if you don't want to. It's completely up to you. So that's where your inspiration comes from. So how do you go about creating a, a location? Well the first thing is, and I'll bring it back to what I always bring it back to and that is Use real-world architecture. Use real-world plans, layouts, deck plans of ships, floor plans for buildings and ruins. It's often a very useful and easy way to get yourself moving, particularly if you're stuck and you just don't know what to do with it. If 
you're unsure, use something that already exists. I would suggest checking out Sly Flourish's fantastic locations. He has some preparation methods and uh, he does actually have a book on, on, the top, uh, on the topic, but the key aspects that you need to take from Mike, Mike um, Shea and Sly Flourish, he's called Sly Flourish Mike Shea, uh, the things you want to take from how to build your location is what you want to do if it's a uh, certainly a fantasy location, you probably want to make it old, you want to make it very large, you want to give it unique features, you want to give it some sort of function, and you want to give it an interesting name. Those generally are the aspects of a location that make it interesting for your players. Now places and locations that you might want to actually focus on first, because they are they are reusable set pieces, and they're really helpful for future preparation. Uh, these are locations that tend to repeat themselves, and so when you make these, try to make them so that you can reuse them. Things like villages and towns and cities often have a very similar layout. Castles often have many different layouts, but there are different types of castles. Um, strongholds, tombs often have a very similar layout. Pyramids, they almost always have exactly the same layout. And then of course you have the maze. Now the maze might seem like a strange one, but all you need is an activity book and you have a maze, okay? An activity book full of mazes is, is the easiest way to get by as a game master, dungeon master, when you need a maze in your adventure. Temples, shrines, a mine has the same structure usually. There's only a couple of different ones that you're going to usually use. And you'll probably be using the bell-shaped mine. Uh, cave locations can vary, but generally their structure will vary. The, the concepts behind them are very similar. A monster lair will have certain locations within it, okay? Same sort of structure quite often. And then your death trap dungeon is really just a, a maze with a whole lot of dangerous things in it. So use that maze um, activity book again. Then you have the treasure vault, usually have the same sort of structure. And sailing ships almost always have deck plans or deck layouts that are identical. Even the, the, uh, the, the levels below the top deck generally follow the same patterns and you can use existing stuff out there. Ensure the location is interactive for your player characters because it's it's a tool. It's part of one of the three pillars of gameplay, okay? Exploring your location. So you need to make your area interactive, your location interactive. Things they can pick up, things, things they can take, things they can move and adjust, things they can open and close. Next, draw a picture with digital tools or just draw it on a piece of paper with a pen or a pencil. Change what you need to and change what you want to for your adventure. Label that map and its locations. Okay, And that labeling might be as much as you just name the location for your map and you just put numbers on it and that's it. You may not need to do any more than that. Now there are some good resources out there. The Game Master's Book of Random Encounters is just full of different locations that you can use and you can reuse them. The Pathfinder uh, role playing game first edition, the Game Mastery Guide, uh, that also has a whole lot of stuff around locations that can be quite useful from page 178 to 181. Do not get the second ed edition one, it's not very good. The first ed edition one is far superior. Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters. Now, although it's full of puzzles, it also um, includes a lot of locations, and it has a couple of maps, not many, but they certainly help you tie uh, the, the concept of a task or an activity into a location. The Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5e has a lot of information that's quite useful too. Right at the back of the book, you'll find there's a whole bunch of charts and tables. So there, there is the, the, your, uh, your first step. Now, even if you do that, you still have to deal with location details and information and the sorts of things you might need to know for your location and the sorts of details you might need to, to, to look into. So your first question's gonna be, who created the location, okay? There must be somebody who actually created it. Now, whether it's a, a species, a race, a group of individuals or one person, you figure that out, you decide what it's going to be. You'll find that Dungeon Master Guide has information on who created uh, locations. This is for 5e on page 100. 
uh, but you can also um, check out other locations. The purpose of a location is also very important. It's all very well knowing who created it, but what was the purpose of that location? Is there a history behind the location or is it completely new? Okay, why is that location important or is there a reason why it's not important? All of these are questions you might want to consider asking. Now, you don't need to answer all of them, but I think the first two questions you need to do is, what is the purpose of the location? And if you want, you create who actually built that location and you'll leave some information somewhere in, your, in that location that you've created, your ruins, your castle, your temple or whatever, about who actually created it. Now, whether they write their name or their signature uh, or just their initials, who knows? You decide how that's going to work. Who inhabits the location currently? You've got to determine that. The general population of the location. There's going to be monsters here. There are going to be humans here. There are going to be some other sorts of creatures. You figure that out. Position, hazards, and obstacles in your location. These are things like traps, puzzles, natural hazards. Even if you don't like using puzzles, even if you don't like using traps, you still want to be looking at natural hazards. Okay, natural hazards are things that present a challenge that don't function like a trap. They are usually to be expected in a location of some kind. Then you have environmental dressing. These are things like objects that can be picked up, furniture. You can add features to the location on the walls, on the floor, on the ceiling. Uh, things that you can interact with or manipulate. As I said, levers, doors, buttons, uh, uh, pulley ropes, anything like that. You're trying to get them to explore that location. You want them to focus on that. So make sure you have those parts figured out. The last thing I want to do is actually cover miscellaneous recommendations that I have for you when you're creating your location. And that is you don't have to be good at drawing a location map because you're not selling it. It's just for you. It probably will be seen by your player characters at some point. Okay, the people who play in your game, your players, will probably see this map. But you're going to be hand drawing it anyway. And if you're not even hand drawing it, does it really matter? Do you know what I mean? If you're using theatre of the mind, they're never really going to see a drawing. The, the, the drawing, the map, is really for the game master. Quite often, unless it's a very large location like a mega dungeon, it's never going to be seen by the players anyway. It's not necessary to use or learn how to use mapping drawing software. So... Yes, okay, I don't want to draw it by hand. I would like to use some sort of software. I would like to be able to draw it out in some way. Uh, there are alternative methods to using software, but there are some very quick, fast, easy, and cheap or free ways of drawing out what you need to get the job done without paying, paying money for that service, okay? And of course, there are some pay services, but every time you pay for something, Okay, you can be guaranteed it's going to be quite extensive and there's a learning curve to picking up how to do this correctly on that software. So many different maps already exist for fantasy locations. So you can steal or borrow existing maps to your heart's content and you'll get the job done. So one of the most important things to remember is you don't actually have to draw the maps. You can get somebody else to do them for you because they probably already have. The chances are, as I said, many locations are reusable, so you just need a map that does, does the job. Anyway, I hope this was useful to you, and if it was, thank you for watching and listening. I want to thank my patrons who support me on Patreon. I want to thank um, you for your time, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, now... <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can hear him. My next door neighbor is trying to learn how to play the saxophone. And uh, he's decided at least he's trying to do it in the middle of the day rather than at night. So what I'm going to do is in the chat, I'm going to drop in a link to the software package that I want to show you. I will quickly, briefly demonstrate that process and how you use it or how it functions. And then I will move over on to the next thing okay so that's that's my intention for today is to try to work fairly quickly i have quite a few different things to show you and i want to make sure i get through all of them so let's have a look at the chat 
And um, actually, while we're, we're, I'm looking through the chat, let me drop the first thing in here. You've probably already heard of this. Now, um, you may not be aware, but you can use this piece of software. It's easy to use. It's very simple. The other thing that's great about uh, this particular piece of software, not only is it easy to use, it's also free. Now, if you want to use it to publish your maps, okay, in other words, you need a map drawing piece of software that's very easy to use, but you still want to um, publish with it, you can use this piece of software, but there is a license and there's a fee, okay? So there is an opportunity to do that. It's called Dungeon Scroll. We'll get to Dungeon Scroll in a second. Um, and there's a bunch of things here today, so we'll see, hopefully get through them all. Um, so Noro, Noro is a patron, thank you for being here. Pale Rider, hello, how are you? In Carter. I think that's the name. Yes, no, I look at it. It's on my list, but <sighs> yes, Encarta does have a free version. But really, to be able to use Encarta, I feel like you probably need the pay version to be able to get the full power out of it. Okay, rather than just the free version. So this is why I didn't really want to. This is one of those things that I left as a, if I have time, maybe I'll mention it. But I don't really want to advertise in Carta. There's so many advertisements for in Carta anyway. Okay. Nacho Nacho Man is patron. Thank you for being here. Uh, we have Fred Huber. Fred Huber is also a patron. I did mention him. Um, the Grand Emperor decreed all towns and cities use the same street map. And quite often you'll find that a city map is like a grid. If, you, if A good city or a town is like a grid. You know, it's either... For a town, it's either just one road runs right through the whole thing, just like a village, or it's a, it's a cross, crossroads, and that's it. And then, of course, you get bigger towns, and it's just gridded up. And the same thing with um, cities tends to be the case. Unless you're right next to a, um, a coastline, then it can be a slightly different shape. Uh, I like using real-world maps it, look, and tweaking them. It's, it's a very simple, easy method, and it still works really well. Uh, Murray Shack. Hello, Murray. How are you doing? Also a patron. Thank you for being here. Um, I feel like I haven't been able to make the, the actual live stream in months. Well, you have made it today. Well done. Hello, Keith. How are you doing? Nice to have you. Video game guidebooks also are a decent source for maps. No, I didn't realize that, but I, I don't really look at video game um, source books nowadays. Uh, yeah, I can't really play them. I sometimes search for city scapes overview images of a town or a city for inspiration not a bad idea absolutely uh next see here we go uh, zooming in on a rural yes okay so what i'm going to do is um do we'll get to that nacho i know you've just mentioned dyson logo i'll get to that okay let's go to dungeon scroll i think that is the first thing that we need to actually deal with so we'll go to dungeon scroll um Please let me know in the chat if you can hear my no noisy neighbor playing his saxophone. Because if you can, I will close the door. I don't want to because it's a very hot day and I won't survive very long. But uh, I can if I have to. All right, so I don't know if this is going to necessarily work. Let's see. Transition over. Old school dungeon maps made easy. This is dungeon scroll. It's very simple. You go to the website. I've provided you with a link. You press start. And it gives you a very simple breakdown. It gives you some shortcuts so you can do stuff. Um, undo is Control Z. Redo is Control Shift Z. Undo is probably the one you're going to be using the most. Okay, if you need to, if you make a mistake, and you need to change it. Undo Control Z. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that because that's not important to me. So your panel, you've got a panel down the right side, and you've got a panel on the left side, and of course my head is in exactly the wrong place. Where can I st stick my head in this, where it won't actually get in the way? Because right now it is definitely in the way. Let me go here, grab that camera, and I'll try to stick it down in the, it's going to have to be down that corner, because everything else is, yep, yeah, okay. I'll shift myself here, there we go. So you have different layer, layers that you can use. You can change the way your layers are going to look. Select the one that you, you would prefer. You can adjust them. Okay, they can be adjusted. Well, let's just use a standard one. Um, you can draw, you can erase, you can snap things on. You can have different layers. There's a layers section here, for background, dungeon layer, all that sort of stuff. There's tools along the bottom and different shapes indicate what you can do. 
So for example, this is a regular polygon. So if I click on that, I can literally use the pointer and I can draw a polygon of whatever shape I like or dimension and place it somewhere. And say so I decide that's roughly what I want. Bam, there we go, done. If I want to draw a rectangular shape, which is a little bit unusual in shape, then I can. And link it and keep going. Let's do this. And there. And that should hopefully have done it. Oh, 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 did it not work? Okay. We'll just, we'll just get rid of that. Uh, give me a second. Whoop. Whoop. I don't want that. Undo, redo. I don't want that undo, redo. Uh, undo. Oh, come on. Edit. There you go. Undo. Undo. And there. Okay, so we've got that shape there. Put that in. I thought I had hit that little point, and it did did it did it before, but it did this do it this time. So your shape that we had before, we can put that back in, like so. We can have passageways and link it up. We can make it like a. Um, we can just carve it out as a straight line. Uh, you can actually just chop it out and 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 move it around as as you see fit. fit. Okay, you can make um, passageways that link. Um, what else is you've got i think this is the right one is that the right one no it isn't there should be a door you can put in a door if we want to put in a door we can draw in a door here um we can put in text if you want to put in text you can you just put in put the box and type whatever you want and it should go in come on come back there we go we can put in text drop that there so yes so you can do a whole lot of different things you can make a full map with this you can have a starting location um, you can make like a cave location you can make um, uh, locations that are more man-made or manufactured in some way uh, there's lots of different tools okay and you just decide on the tool that you think is most appropriate for you and you can draw it in however you see fit and uh, and then of course it will fill it in for you. I'm not particularly doing anything um, special here. I'm just showing you that there are tools that you are available that are available to you. So you can do a rectangle. Okay. Probably the most common tool is this one that you would use. And then of course you can then link up all of these things as you see fit. This is designed to work quickly. So if you need to get a map done in a, in a short space of time, you probably could. Okay, and if you need a starting location, there you go. Come down the pathway and you go. You're done. Um, so yes, that's um, that's Dungeon Scroll. And look, you can do you can do more with it. So you could do instead of like a, a dungeon location, you can do things with buildings. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, I found that uh, the it takes a bit of time too. It's a little bit more, um, takes definitely a bit more time. You want to select this layer if you want to do that sort of thing. This layer here is probably the layer that you're after if you want that. Um, but we'd have to start a new one anyway if we're going to do that. So let's just go open. No, no, I won't, I won't worry about it. So that's Dungeon Scrawl. Um, certainly useful to you depending on what you're trying to achieve okay and of course there is a there's a pay version that allows you to do a lot more if you need it okay so the next one uh, what do you got here um, I didn't realize I was uh, way behind well pale right I don't know why would you be behind Dyson logos got her now we've done that finds easy to replace replicate a game mat yes it, look it is it is designed to be easy to duplicate a dungeon area and you can do it quickly uh so let's go down and, and cover some just really quickly to see almost a full house the more the merrier the sex the sex is playing but it's nice a nice addition he's not getting better i'll tell you that now <laughs> he's not improved let's do another one so that is dungeon scroll the next one I would like to actually cover with you today is um, really if you need to deal with, come on, it's going to freeze on me. 
leave leave the site if you want to do a whole what do we want to do a, a whole world you know how i've said like create your world by just grabbing a piece of paper and a pen and just draw out the whole thing well yes certainly can or you can cheat and this piece of software asgar um, the fantasy map generator is basically going to allow you to do that so hello um bell allen how are you I was going to ask what the software is. Is that the Dyson logo one? Uh, no, it's not. It's 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 the one that looks like Dyson logo. You'll find the link to it, um, Bill, up the top here. It says Dungeon Scrawl. Okay, you can use it for free, and if you need to publish for with it, there is a, a fee that you you pay and you license it, so that you can put it in your publications if you need to. So the next one, you're probably going to use this thing at some point if you need to create a world and you need to do it fast. Say you just don't have 30 seconds and you need to push a button. It's literally like that. Press a button and she's ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera around again and I'm going to show you what you've got here and I'll show you how it works. This is if you need to create a world. The whole thing. It's ne it needs to be done fast. I've got, as soon as I log into this website, it's already created something for me. If I don't like it, I can go to the little arrow in the top left corner and say new map. Give me a new map. Generate a new map for me. There we go. I got a new map. If I don't like this one and I think it sucks, I can do a new map. And you just keep hitting that button till you get a con the consonants, kind of the shape and the way that you like, and you're ready to go. Now, you're thinking, but what if I want to change the names of these various places? I don't like the name of this. The world, I can call it anything I like. But the different continents, their names are weird. I would like to adjust them. Well, if you go over to the, the actual word of that continent, you can, you'll can you get a hand, okay? It turns into a hand. You click it, and you can edit it. That's right. You can actually go in there and decide, no, I would like that continent to be called uh, Bob's uh, Neverland. Of course, you probably would do that, but <laughs> you can if you want. It is now Bob's Neverland. Okay, you've just changed it. So you can do that to any of these continent, uh, continents that have been named. Uh, if you've got a continent that isn't named, a little bit different. You can actually zoom in too, so it is possible to actually zoom in. So this is an area, this is a lake right here, but we're not going to worry about the lake. I can change the name of the lake, I can change it. If I don't want it to be fresh water, it can be, it can be something else. It can be full of wine for all, all I care. Uh, you know, whatever works for you. Now, when you go into these things, you'll discover that you can actually do a little bit more. You don't just get to change the name of a location. It doesn't just do the consonants. It does quite a bit more. You can actually get a lot further in. But how do I do that? Well... I'm not going to install it, not at this present time, but what I would like to do is I'll be able to, to zoom in. So if I double click, it will zoom in on the location that I want to go to. Well, actually, I would like to zoom in on Bob's Neverland. So I'm going to zoom in there. I'm going to drag that little sucker up so I can actually get at it. Now I can see there are new locations that have been created. Names have already been put in here. I didn't do this. This did. The software did it. Okay, so there's different locations. These could, these could be cities or towns or whatever. They've got names on them. I can go to them and click them and change the name of this place. Okay, so I've got a culture for it. I don't like the name. I would like to call it uh, Snyder. Sny whoops. Sny is it Snyder? Snyder. I'm going to Snyderville. Yeah, it's a terrible name. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with you a little bit, but people, okay, you've got a basic layout of it, okay, you can zoom in and you get more information on it, you can change different aspects of it, but now that I've done Snyderville, I can then jump back out of that, and she's all good, she's ready to go, okay, I can change its type, hunting, river, lake, there's different types of towns, generic, let's say it's just generic, generic, okay, Snyderville, what if I don't, I want to work on that. What do I want to work somewhere else? I want to go to this one here, right here. Let's click that one on. Okay, let's well, find. I wonder if I can get a bit closer though. Oops, I can. A bit more closer. 
bit closer. If I maxed it out, okay, there we go. Click it on. Is it going to come up? Come on. There we go. All right, so I can get in closer if I need to, but you can see that the, the lines indicate roads or pathways from one city to another. So this is just to give you a basic rough layout, okay? And then you can go and use the city generator, uh, what about, to actually generate your town or city if you want to, because that's what that's designed for. That's why there's a link to it, and you can then seed it into your world. You can keep these worlds, like if you decide, okay, I've worked on this, this is what I want, I can then keep it. You can actually keep it. It doesn't get lost as long as you press the install button. Okay, all right, so that is one way of building out your, uh, your world if you needed to. So that's that one. Next, let's get out of here and uh, move on to the next tool on our list. Doesn't cost you a thing, by the way. Not a thing. Uh, Dyson Lego, ha Lego has a, a lot of free maps. Yes, he does. We'll get to him, don't worry. But I wanted to give you the things that allow you to create stuff. And I thought that would probably be more useful to you. Okay, so let's just check to make sure the chat, 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 chat. So everybody seems to be reasonably happy. Lake of Whiskey. Yes, you could call a Lake of Whiskey Drunkard's Depths if you want to. You could do whatever you like. Okay, it's completely up to you. All right. Let's get rid of that one and let's move on to our next piece of software. I was talking about um, a piece of software that could have created a town or a city. Was I not? Well, yes, you can. And that's what this next piece of software is all about. So let me drop it into the chat so you know what it is. This is the link to it. What about? Okay, what about is when you need to create your town or city fast. You'll notice with this particular piece of software that when you jump into it, it's already created a, a location for you. It's got a compass rose on it. It's got distances on it. It's got roads. It's got locations. It's got buildings already inserted for you, ready to go. But what happens if I don't like the name of the town? Well, I can change that. I can go to the menu and, and, and decide I want to create a new town or new city. Okay, I can decide how big it's going to be. I can generate just a settlement. There are different things. I can export this as a PNG. So if you need to export the map and use it later on, and you need to put it into your notes somewhere so you don't lose it, you can do that because there is an export feature. Okay, just use the drop down menu. Okay, but what if I want to actually change the, uh, the name of this town? Well, I just double click it and I decide I'm going to call this um, Sex. Uh, Phone, phone all. There we go. I'll call it that. That's my new my new name for my my town. Now I might decide this is not a town. This is supposed to be a city. So I can I can change any of these. I can just click on to what it is and then retype in a wide hall. And I'm going to call this West Hall. How about that? I can change the name to West Hall, and it's re readjusted it. I can go into East Gate. I can change that old district. I could turn this into the market district if I wanted to. Market district. The docks ward, already got that. I'm fine with that. And then we have um, Fishhorn is another location. So this just gives you a basic layout. It's not going to give you a lot of um, in-depth detail. Okay, that's not what it's designed for. It is designed to give you just a basic sort of shape. And it does it quick, like literally in seconds. This this is why it's so useful to you. So if you needed to have towns and cities and you're worried about drawing it out and figuring out where everything is and you just want to get it done, you can. You use this piece of software, okay? It is called Whatabow, okay? W-A-T-A-B-O-U, Whatabow. And it's basically a medieval fantasy city, city generator and uh, you, as I said, you can make the settlements a lot smaller if you need to. It doesn't have to be this size. So that's that particular piece of software. Very useful, very fast, will speed up your um, creation process a lot. We could ha call it Sax Hell. Yes, I, I could have done that, but I haven't done that. I hate to say it, but we're not finished. There is more. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next piece of software. This is... 
probably not as good as dungeon scroll in my opinion but it's pretty simple to use okay that's probably one of the reasons why i'm going to put it forward is a, a tool for you to consider and, and now that's not the right one i've already put that one in why did i not get the the link this time let's try, let's try that again dungeon map doodler dungeon map doodler come on dungeon map doodler why are you not doing what you're supposed to do you look like you have dungeon map doodler reload it okay we'll reload dungeon map doodler and yes okay all right dungeon map doodler somehow i managed to mess that up but i'll put it in here another tool it is free doesn't cost you a thing uh, for those of you who want to be able to keep your costs down and get your stuff done quickly you can and I just need to, yep my head's in the right space so you'll be able to see everything this is what it looks like it's got a very simple interface uh, of course the more practice you spend uh, time you spend on it the more practice you have the better you'll get at it you can have layers there's the option to put layers in you can have a foreground, you can have a background, but there are there's a tool um, bar right down here on the right hand side. The right hand side allows you to do all sorts of different things. Pick a tool and start to draw. Now, whether that's a line drawing, or you need an interior wall, or you need a room. So we have a room tool, so we can actually just go and chuck in a room just like that. If you want an unusual shape, you can draw in a shape just as we did before there's a shape okay you can use a stamp so there are there's a stamp tool here for stamping things and you just select the thing you want to stamp somewhere I want to put a bed here I'll put a bed here there you go there's a stamp um, if you need to put in text there's the option to put in text I can put in text here and I just write in whatever I need to put in here so this is going to be uh, the um, uh, outhouse out house <laughs> it's not really the outhouse but I'm putting in the outhouse uh, outhouse and okay there we go we've got an outhouse I don't want any more of that we have an eraser what if I decide that's not a good idea just get rid of the outhouse whoops oops that's not right let's undo that undo that there's the undo button on the top left side uh, we can actually put in walls we can draw in and connect rooms by using our room tool okay so we could just go link this together and it's now linked yes there'll be a stamp for putting in doors as well uh, it's again I would say this is not as good as um, dungeon scroll but it is a tool it's there right and then you have a paint tool and you can draw in um, interior uh, walls so if you need to, to draw an interior wall of some kind there is the option to do so you can draw in a wall like that with this tool here and uh, and now your outhouse has some cubicles there you go <laughs> you have an outhouse with a couple of extra cubicles <laughs> so yes uh, doesn't probably look quite as good as dungeon scroll okay but it's still a fast tool it still has options and it's it's free you don't have to pay for it in terms of using it as um, publication and licensing I'm not completely aware of how that works so I couldn't I couldn't answer that question unfortunately but there's a tool that you can use okay uh, where are we home of the overboard hoodlums <laughs> greetings hello prepare cook and survive hello how are you uh, overboard Joe nice to have you man a moderator thank you for being here thanks for hanging out <laughs> so let's not finish there because there's more I, I've, I've got quite a few that I want to go through I've gone over a lot of these things in the past um, Jasp AK how are you how are you doing so let's get rid of dungeon map doodler and let's move on to the next one I want to leave this and I've shown you this one before I'm going to put the link in to the chat and we'll go over it and I will show you what this one does what are you what if you've got to create a location really fast you do not have time to mess around and you just want to make something that does the job well there is a possibility of doing that there is a thing out there what is it called dun 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 it is called hex roll <laughs> that's what it's called hex roll 
Now you can change everything. You can change the probability of your mountain. So we can have three or you can take, turn it down. You want to have more forest or less forest. You can put it down. Desert, less, less desert. You can have more plains if you want. You can have coastlines. Uh, less of that if you want. You can change all that number of regions. You can adjust all this. There's little dials for all of this stuff. You can change the kind of regions within a hex. All of that is under your control. Settlements, the number of settlements that you put in here when it generates it. The probability of towns and cities and villages being created. Inns, it does inns. It will include the maps for dungeons. Yes, I know. You can put in caves, temples, tombs. It's going to do this all for you. You need to generate the entire world and all the information related to that. This is what this does. Okay. Pen, dice, and paper. Okay. You really want to consider using this. It doesn't matter what version of the game you're playing or what game you're playing. Seriously, hex roll is really, really useful. Because if you get stuck, this will help you. It includes factions. It includes wandering monsters. It will put in cults, militia, uh, all of that. Now I can now generate this. I press the button once I've put in my information and it starts doing its thing, thinking a little bit. It takes a little while. I would say about a minute or so for it to generate a map. Once it's done though, you can use everything there. And is there an option to port it and um, and export it? Yes, there is. There is. There is an option to do that. I'm not going to... There is a download button right there. You can turn it into a zip file. It's in the top left corner. And it just looks like the little download button. It doesn't say download. It's just a sort of like a basket or a box that the open top with an arrow pointing down. That's where you download what you want. Now, you're thinking... Aha, so now how does this work? Well, I can click on my sidebar, which gives me all my different regions, my settlements, my inns, my dungeons, my adventure dungeons, literally, it's created dungeons for you, my factions, um, my NPCs, my rumors, my secrets, all that sort of stuff. I can just click on here, or I can click straight onto the map. What if I want to know what's, where's it, what's got, what, are, what is there at 70? Hex 70. Dead large rock remains. And it gives you random breakdown of what you would find there. Now it is built for an older version of Dungeons and Dragons, okay? A D and D. So don't use the stat block, just use the fact that there are hobgoblins and a certain number of hobgoblins or camels there or whatever. You can use the, the basics around it to do everything that you need. Okay? What if that's not what I want? I actually I want um, they're going to go somewhere in this uh, in this place and I the lifeless the lifeless te teeth okay this is hex 64 and it gives me a rundown of trolls what if I need a dungeon I need a dungeon that's already made they're going to go somewhere and I need a dungeon that's made but uh, I just select dungeons tomb of the doomed lich it has drawn a map it has numbered it okay it has given it a name and underneath, you will notice it gives you encounters, sort of random encounters you might in, uh, include, wandering monsters, okay? And then each location that is numbered has information about that area and what is there, okay? And you just, you've done, all the work is done for you. The adventure has been written, all of it. And how many dungeons did it create in the space of about a minute? Quite a few, yes, you can see. All locations are spelled out. It even has a little side map to show you where on the main map that location is. Where is the library? It's number nine, and it's about there on the map. There's where it is. This is it's, it's very close to where 12, and there's some passageways leading off it. And all the stuff, that you, it has treasure, it has traps, it has monsters. It's got the lot. What if that's not enough? Well, guess what? How many dungeons did I create? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 dungeons. Um, each dungeon you're probably not going to get through in one session. And if your players are really fast and they do, well, you've got 12 sessions worth of dungeons that you can get them to explore. Now, they are dungeons, they're not, you know, overland or wilderness um, locations, I, I, I understand. But if you are the sort of person who sends people to ruins, and a ruin is basically just a dungeon, then you're ready to go. 
and all the information you need is there. So I can't recommend this piece of software enough. If you want to get things done fast and you don't want to muck around and you want to put it, um, build it and get somebody else to do all the work for you and then just download all that information into a, um, a zip file, hex roll is the way. It really is. Uh, as I said before, I'm all about making things faster and quicker for you to get things done. Okay, but we are not finished there. I have something else I want to show you. <laughs> Just give me a second. Some of you will probably have already come across this before. <clears throat> if you are a patron, you'll find the document with all of these links to these various software packages is part of the, um, I think it's called the Dungeon Master Preparation Locations um, uh PDF that I created and there's a list of linked resources in that PDF and it has these and many more okay I will continue to update it as time goes by so yes you want to definitely check that one out all is free yes the CAX Max all of this is free it doesn't cost you a cent very very careful about making sure that you're not paying for stuff <clears throat> you're welcome Bill we are not finished though I am going to close down hex roll and we're going to move on to the next one. Now, some of you will have come across this before. It's been around a really long time. It does a lot of work for you. And uh, I don't think enough people actually use it when they need to. And this is Donjon. Donjon has its own tool. Now, Donjon, thank you, Bill, for the super chat, $10 super chat. Um, I had heard of some of these, but uh, this overview is brilliant. Well, let's hopefully I get through all of them. There's quite a few left to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, Jasper, 12 dungeons already made is insane. So let's go and have a look at Donjon. Now, Donjon, Donjon is not my favorite world factual generator. Out of everything that I could use, I wouldn't say this is my favorite. But the good thing about it is, is it's, 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 re it's reasonably quick. You can adjust things, you can change the random seeds for this thing, okay? All of that is certainly possible. Uh, you can change it to the square, you can change it to, to whatever you want. You can have polar stereotypes, you can have it spheric, um, spherical, uh, you can have an atlas, you can change it from an atlas to something else, completely up to you. You can change the amount of water there will be, the amount of ice, um, the height of, um, of uh, the image, in other words, how many mountains there are, iteration all that and then you just press random or create so it can go random or create I just got to press random and it creates it okay and then we have it now this isn't going to be in its in its in its general form isn't going to be hugely useful one of the good things though about it is it gives you a basic idea of what you're trying to do okay if you're trying to be fast I still think that the um, the, uh, the, 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 the world builder that I showed you before is probably more useful than this. But one of the good, good things about Donjon is it has lots of random generators for different versions of the game of D&D and different games and, and all sorts of different aspects. And it's not just NPCs or names, um, but you can do a lot more with it. You just need to look at the tools and pick the things. You can literally generate a town. There's a town generator there I need a generator town done random name push the button there we go you can print it out you can save it as a PDA uh, a PNG as a file if you need to you can change the way it's going to be structured you can make it small you can make it large okay you can make it a full-blown city I know a lot of you like cities you need a city now you have a city print it out it's got names on it okay it's all done for you you don't have to think about it so if you need to get things done fast, this is where you go. But that's not the only tool. I'm not going to go over all the tools. Just go check the website out, see what you think, play around with it, and see if it will reduce your prep time. Okay? Okay, next, let's get rid of Donjon. That's pretty pretty common for most people. People have been going on about Dyson Logo. Now, Dyson Logo has a, a huge archive of maps, which he allows the community to use for free you don't have to pay for these things okay 
I'm sure he would appreciate if you joined his Patreon, but if you don't want to do that, you don't need to. Um, Dyson logo and <clears throat> look, I, I, the number of times I've looked at this website and thought, uh, I can't believe that he makes so much of his stuff available for free. And when he says there are hundreds of free maps available, he's right. There are. You just need to know how to search. He has a, um, a legend to show you what different symbols represent. And you simply just go to the, the various thing that you want. Or you can just scroll down. If you look down on the right side, you'll see maps. And it will break it down into the different types of maps that you can actually get access to. Now, a lot of these maps are very specific to locations. So if you're looking for something that's a bit more generic, maybe that's not going to work for you here. But if you want something that's, a, um, that's named, um, there's probably no reason why you can't number it yourself. It would be easy, drop it into, into paint and just put numbers into it where you need to. But there's a lot of different maps here and different ways of finding what you need to find. Okay, I recommend using this when you're stuck and you don't want to use a generator and you would prefer to have somebody actually at the other end thinking about where things go because Dyson logo actually does that and he doesn't just do top down there's even isometric drawings in here as well okay here's a particular style of uh, a drawing so if you don't like that sort of style of drawing don't worry we have a different option for you so go check out Dyson logo all right Let's close up Dyson logo. I believe we are done with him. Uh, yes, we are. Let's get on to the next one. Now, I've been using this a lot recently. The reason being is that I have some control over what I'm doing, but not complete control. And it is a generator. It is a map generator. It does a few different things. We've been using it a lot recently uh, on my channel. Uh, the, the, the reason being is I need to be able to produce a map for you to build an adventure around very fast. And Dave's Mapper, I've talked about this before, Dave's Mapper is a great way of getting that done. Now, how this works uh, is super simple. You do not need to really think too much. You just need to choose what you want. And this is it. It goes straight into this. There are a bunch of different options. You can create dungeons. So you click the dungeon one if you want to have dungeons. If you want caverns and caves, then caverns and caves. If you want dungeons and caverns and caves to mixed up together, then you can have that. Select that option. If you want a side view of a dungeon or a mine or a location, you can do that. Okay, this allows you to do that. You can actually build something like this. We'll be dealing with this kind of map in the future on my channel. Um, I've built something, I've numbered it, it's ready to go, and you guys are going to fill it out with all sorts of interesting stuff. You want a village. You need somebody to draw you a village. Well, yes, you can have a village. We did a village on my channel not that long ago. We I, I used this software, drew a, a village map, and then once I'd drawn the village map, I then numbered it on paint. Super simple, no complicated software, no money to be paid. And then I just got you guys to decide what was where. And we just wrote it up on a Google document. Very simple. You need a city. I know you're going to say, what about my cities, Fred? Yes, you can have cities. There's an option to do cities. Uh, you can do a, um, a science fiction spaceship if you want. If you're playing in a science fiction campaign. You need a science fiction city? Fine. Now, let's go back to dungeons. You'll notice that each square that I click on has uh, various options on it. Okay, heart. The heart just means build the entire map using this particular art style. So if there's a particular art style you prefer and you don't want the art style to change, you can pick the one you like. So maybe decide this is the art style I prefer. Because right down here, you see there's all these ticks. This indicates that you're using all of the different artists' art styles all at once. But you don't need to do that if you don't want to. So you can use the heart to select that particular art style. You can um, select the, um, the X to remove the tile and replace it. Uh, you can just cycle through and find something that's a corner tile to fit there. Decide I don't want that, no, I would like something else. And I just keep cycling through and I pick the thing that I think is going to work for me in this situation. So I decide this is the one for me. Okay. You can do this with all the different little tiles here. You can change them using the little arrow. 
and change what's going to be linked up. Um, it's designed so that everything should generally match up. You will occasionally have problems where things do not match up. They're not, it's not exactly perfect every single time. So there is a little fluff fluffing and playing around. But if you still need to generate a map quickly, but you need some control over it, this is what you want. You can export it. There is an option to go new, but you can also export it. It's not that hard. You can change the size of your map up here as well. So I don't want to make it quite so big. I can make it smaller. I want to make it even smaller than that. That's all I needed. I just want one by one. That's it. Just a few different locations. It's not quite a five room dungeon, but she's close. Okay. And if I want a particular art style, I decide the middle tile is a good art style. Let's go with that art style. Well, now it's generating an entire map with that art style. And I look at the map. Do I need to change any of the tiles? I can decide to change the tiles if I want, or I can leave them the same. But maybe I decide, no, I would actually like to change it. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. And now I export it, and I'm ready to go. Now, I don't know much about the licensing for this particular piece of software. Um, I think this is not designed to be used that way. I think this is designed to be used as, I guess, more as a quick, fast way of building a location for your adventures. And it has a lot of different um, designers, including Dyson Logo has contributed to this. They have agreed to have their stuff in this. Uh, it is designed for you to use it to make your own stuff super fast. Yep. And I highly recommend that one. Okay, now I'm going to just close this one off. Just let me have a drink of water. Hello, Itchy, how are you doing? How am I doing? Have I got, uh, so I've got a, a couple more left to go. So let's keep going. I haven't finished, so let's do the next one. For those of you who just want your maps already made, you don't want to draw it, you just want to have a map. Just get me a map, get it done. And I would like kind of like a more fancy map. I, I mean, Dyson logos all very well, but what about fantasticmaps.com? Fantastic Maps is another way of getting what you need done. And for those of you who use a virtual tabletop, Fantastic Maps might be the solution to you. Now, you still need to a certain degree, there is a free tile or dungeon um, tile um, builder that you can use. You can port those tiles over to use them. But a lot of the maps, the free maps, they're color. They're not black and white, okay? Um, there are sample maps, some of them are isometric, some of them are looked down. If you need to use them a virtual tabletop, you pick the one that is gonna suit you. Uh, sometimes they have grids on them, sometimes they don't. But ultimately, it's all about, I'm dealing with people who prefer color, I need to include something that's color. I need an in, I need a free city map. Uh, I need a, a set, an island. I need a um, a ship, shipwreck. Okay, I need a shipwreck. Give me a, give me a shipwreck, please. I would like a shipwreck. And uh, away you go. Now there's all the information about licensing and so forth, f um, so forth is there. Okay, how you use it for free is explained. Um, but yeah, this is a tool for those of you who are potentially looking for free maps but need to get stuff that's color, because your players are wanting color. There is a free pack of maps, by the way. You can download that just by clicking that little button that I just pressed now. It turns it into a zip file, and away you go. You're ready to, ready to rock and roll. Um, I wouldn't say there's not as many options here as you like. There is a search function, so you can search for certain types of maps. Uh, it does have a world maps section, so under the map section you can get world maps, regional maps, city maps, indoor battle maps, outdoor battle maps. Let's go to outdoor battle maps. So here are a selection of outdoor battle maps that you could use. If you want indoor battle maps, then you go to the indoor battle maps, and there is a selection of indoor battle maps. You still need to keep an eye on uh, Pinterest because a lot of their maps wind up going there, okay? Still a useful tool for those of you who are using a virtual tabletop and want something free and looks good and you're not too worried about its structure, and you'll build the, the adventure around the location itself, then use this. Why not? Okay. Now, I also want to cheat. I want to give you a tool that, or a website that allows you to find all the other tools that you might need 
to get your maps and locations done. And, and rather than going through every single piece of software, which of course you could, you don't need to because there is a thing called D&D Compendium. Okay, D&D Compendium, this website has a resource, it's a, it's a Dungeon Master resource and it's called Maps and Map Tools. Now what this does is it breaks down for you everything that you might want to ever use potentially. The free stuff and the paid stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go over to this website now so you can see it and uh, where is it here? <clears throat> so I use this website as a way of figuring out if something might be useful to me. You'll see there's a column that says map making tools free and it lists all the free stuff. As I said some of these things listed are as free but really the paid version is what you want because the free version is just not enough to get the job done, right? Um, and things like Encarta, uh, Dungeon Fog, they, they certainly work that way, okay? I would suggest that you probably don't go don't go into them unless you're really willing to pay some money. Um, also, um, Hob Buy It, Hob Buy It is an isometric map making um, software. That there is probably going to be almost useless to you unless you're paying for it. A lot of the free stuff is definitely here. Some of it's better than others. Then you have the paid map making tools down the side here. I'm not going to go into them because I don't generally use them. Uh, and they always have a, a sort of learning curve. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll get some other tools. Things like world and city map generators. These are things that just generate it. We talked about Whatabow and um, Asgar's um, fantasy map generator already. I've shown you those. But there are more, not just those. There are a few more that you could check out if you wanted to. There's also dungeon generators. Now we were talking about um, uh, Donjon. But there is the Mega Dungeon uh, Generator, there's the Cave Generator, there's the Waves Dungeon Generator, uh, the Wizards Dungeon Generator, uh, there's the Poly Dungeon, if you want to use the Poly Dungeon, check them out, see if they work for you. There are pre-made map collections, and there's a bunch of websites, okay? Amongst these, of course, you're going to find Dyson Logo, but it's not just them, um, just um, Dyson. You can find other things there. Very good resource if you need that sort of thing. If you need specific location generators, like an in-floor generator, there's an in-floor generator here, okay? You can create random caves and dungeons and wildernesses with um, gozies. Uh, there is a cartographer community that you can be linked to. There are mapping assets, so if you need to take assets into a piece of software to use, you can do that. So all the tools and things that you might potentially need are right in that link that I just provided. Not just map making tools, paid and free, but also a lot of generators and resources that I haven't covered already. That's a lot of information I'm aware of. But that is the best I can do, uh, frankly. Uh, I try some of these things occasionally to see how well they will work for me. I have found the ones that I've shown you are generally the ones I prefer. Uh, first, The very first ones, the ones I showed you at the very beginning, are probably the strongest out of the whole bunch that I've, uh, I've interacted with and tried out. Now, in terms of will you wind up with a virus by using these websites, it's really hard to know because um, some of these websites are well kept up, some of them aren't. I can tell you now that I've been fine with Dungeon um, Scrawl. I found that the, um, the world builder uh, that I showed you at the very beginning um, the fantasy map generator that, you know, that creates the world, that was actually pretty good. Hex roll has been pretty good. But some of the other things might be just a little bit of a, a pain, okay? Um, just, just be careful. My suggestion is take your time, make sure you've backed everything up when you start going through the D&D &D compendium and looking at all those mapping resources. Because some of those resources I haven't linked to because I found there were slight problems with them, okay? The ones that I have linked to, I have. <laughs> and they are all right. So far, my computer is still operating. I'm going to finish this poll. And uh, I'm always looking at, for new stuff, specifically for this program, because I know when it comes to locations, you need a way of mapping quickly and easily. 
And uh, if I can find more things to add to the list that I feel like are useful to you and work, then I will do so, okay? Do you create your own adventure location maps? Yes, 67%. There's no excuse, you can all do this. If you're making your own adventures, you can all do your own location maps because Dave's Mapper would let you do that. Dave's Mapper will just about cover everything, okay? And if you can't do that, well, you know, and that's, that'll, that's fast. It's not like you're sitting down and drawing everything out. Um, sometimes 21%, just watching 7% and no 3%. Well, hopefully we can move that no to a yes and sometimes 21 to a yes. I'm all about you creating your own things. Let's move beyond buying everybody else's stuff and just make your own things, okay? All right, drink of water for me. Thank you, Bill Allen, for... Uh, now, Bill Allen has a YouTube channel, if you were, were not aware. He does a lot of uh, different things on there. I know you were doing teenagers playing um, D&D and role-playing games, but I know you've got a group of guys who play, or group of people, adults, who are playing now. And um, he, he gives advice as well, so go and check him out at some point. Anyway, that's everything. I'm done. I'm spent. It's, it's hot in my office. I need to go. I will return to game master preparation locations and what you, tools you can use in the future hopefully i'll have something new that i can show you you never know sometimes it takes a bit of time to find these things i am tempted to show you something new but given the company that has made it i have an issue with that company <laughs> okay and even no matter how much i think about it and how good the tool seems to me I have a problem showing it to you in a live stream because they don't need any help from me, frankly. Anyway, um, that's that's it for me today. So I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who took part in the poll today. Thank you to everybody who's been watching and listening. I do appreciate it. I want to thank all of my patrons. The patrons support me to make sure I can keep doing this. As I said, everything that I do on my channel always finds its way to Patreon at some way, in some form, and if it doesn't, you let me know when I put it up there, okay? And this program is up there on Patreon. Um, but you don't even have to go there if you don't really want to, you can just watch the live stream, okay? It's there. So thank you to Noroak, thank you Pal Rider, thank you Bill Allen, uh, thank you Fred Huber, Itchy, thank you for being here, Jasper AK, I appreciate your uh, your comments, um, the Cax Max. Murray Shack, thank you for being here. Prepare, cook, and survive. We've had the whole crew. Overboard, Joe, thanks for being here. Pardon me, I'm burping. Sorry about that. Nacho, Nacho Man. And I said Pale Rider already, didn't I? I'm pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, Keith, thank you for being here. Everybody, wherever you are in the world, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. Did I, did I forget Fred Huber? I can't remember. I'm trying not to forget anybody. It's very hard. Um, yeah. Till next time, keep rolling those 20s.